<laughs> yes, I'm going to be talking about something very close to Nikita's heart. Uh, and, um, but strangely, it's a completely different connection between integral systems and supersymmetric gauge theory. Well, maybe you could figure it out, but they're related. <laughs> Um, let's see. Yeah, so I've been you know, doing some work the past couple of years, um, partly with my, my student, Owen Gwilliam, about you know, foundations of perturbative quantum field theory. So what I want to explain today is um, like an application of this stuff to do some you know, actually compute, uh, compute the expectation values of some, some observables so in a certain gauge theory. I'm gonna, So it's exact computation of the expectation values of, of some Wilson operators in a deformed um, n equals one gauge theory. Um, and as I said, I mean, this looks like you know, a statement a physicist might make. But I really, um, well, this is intended to be rigorous. I, it's rigorous unless I've made a mistake. So like, like, you know, like all math. Um, so what we find is that the answer is going to be the partition function of a of some two-dimensional integral lattice model. And it's just this, this story is a part of some kind of general relationship between 4D field theories and integral, lat and integral lattice models. So I'm going to spend a fair bit of the talk just telling people some kind of basic things about these integral lattice models. It's a, it's a really nice story. And then I want to explain some kind of general abstract story, you know, using the, the axioms of field theory in terms of you know categories and functors in the Kabordism category, um, why will a 4D theory give an integral lattice model? And then finally, I'll focus on the example of the n equals one gauge theory. And there's also some um, n equals two examples, which maybe I haven't worked out full detail, but maybe I'll have some time to say something about them. OK, so what? So the data of a two-dimensional lattice model, at least of the class we're going to consider, is a vector space V. And some and endomorphism and of V tensor V. Okay. So let's consider an N by M doubly periodic lattice. Sides like like that, so it's you know it's on a torus. <coughs> Say a, a state of the model. Let's see. Well, let's back up one second. Let's choose a basis for V. Then 
a state is a way of labeling. Maybe this is the wrong terminology. It's a way of labeling um, every edge by a basis element. Okay, so the interaction at a vertex is the following. So if I have a suppose I have a vertex like this. Well, I, if my vertex, if the edges coming out of a vertex are labeled by basis elements like this, then I label the vertex by, by the corresponding matrix element of R. goes from V tensor V to V tensor V like that. And then the partition function of the model, of the lattice model, is the sum. It's like, you know, it's like a discretized path integral <coughs> where I take the sum over states, as before, labelings of edges, edges by basis elements, then the product over vertices. So once I have a state, then for every vertex I get a number. Um, Or this, these i, j, and k, l are determined by the state. OK. Is this uh, reasonably clear? Should be, I hope, familiar to many people. Oh, I mean, um, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, it's about like every we think of every vertex as being like this. It's really in a plane. I mean, the lattice is framed lattice. Well, maybe put one, two, three, four on the Vs. Okay. Yeah, I would have done it the other way. I would have done one, two, three, four, and that would be the <laughs> <laughs> So don't don't you have to make a choice? You do. You make you make you make a choice, and the choice is when I have a. I mean, the the lattice is labeled. Some some directions go up, and some go sideways. Right? It's it's framed. So the choice is, um, where do I consider or is a map from V tensor V to V tensor V? So which which V tensor V? Right? It's a map from this V tensor V to this V tensor V. It's, and it's it's all just a convention, so. Okay. Um, okay. So we can we can rewrite this in the Hamiltonian framework. Well. So. The Hilbert space. Is V tensor N. Okay. Let me draw a little picture. So the Hilbert space I should think of as associated to the boundary of some 
of some lattice, and then Well, I can define the transfer matrix. T from V tensor N to V tensor N by T is equal to, well, so In this picture, every vertex is associated to a map from V tensor V to V tensor V. So I can take 4 and I can compose it using the horizontal composition. So I take OR to the N, where this is horizontal composition. Position. And then I take the trace in V where th this copy of V I'm taking the trace in is this copy. Right, so that amounts to gluing. That makes this, taking the trace is the, effect, is, is the effect of gluing these two ends together. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Well. And it seems clear that the partition function is the trace of the transfer matrix to the M. Right. We just, you know, to see this, we just write out matrix multiplication and trace using a basis, and we see this is the same formula. So when we're going to be considering integrable models, so you can ask, what does it mean for such a thing to be integrable? So roughly, a model is integrable if I can find some infinitely many operators on V tensor N, which commute with T. Okay. So in practice, in examples, what happens is the following. So or depends on a parameter. Say a lambda, the spectral parameter. This will be a parameter in C star. Well, depending on which theory, C, yeah, it's going to be a for us, we're going to have a special parameter which will have a pole at the origin. And or lambda satisfies an equation which implies that for two different values of lambda, <laughs> t lambda prime these the transfer matrix commutes two different values of lambda. So then, the infinitely many operators are given by, say, <clears throat> the Laurent expansion of this guy. <clears throat> Gives the infinitely many operators. equation is called the um, Yang-Baxter equation. 
Everybody happy? Um, so let me, let me give a, a quick example. So can people see this blackboard? Probably didn't help at all. So V is C2, and R is probably not good. Kind of depends on your convention what R is. Um, So or is going to be an endomorphism of this space, C2 tensor C2. And uh, what it is, it's going to be like the quadratic Casimir something like the permutation operator composed with this guy. This is permutation. Yes. So this is the Heisenberg XXX model. Yeah. I advise you not to Google this. So more generally, there's like higher spin chains. So while Drinfeld and Fedeyev and all these guys from the um, St. Petersburg School said the following, if, if V is a representation of SLN, then coming from, we can construct an integral model using the Yangian. So there's a certain formula for or, or of lambda v tensor v lambda inverse. This comes from the or matrix for the Yangian. To ex <clears throat> so we must ask the following question. I mean, so if I take a model which is integrable and I just perturb this matrix or a little bit, it will no longer be integrable. However, a small perturbation shouldn't change, you know, the, the qualitative physics of the of this this picture. Someone can ask, you know, what's so special about these guys? Where do they come from? So, where do integral models come from? And well, the answer, one answer, given by Nekrasov and Chattishvili, and uh, Vasily Pesson gave a talk about this yesterday. You can just is is a uh, four-dimensional gauge theories. So another answer. Well, that I, I developed also says four-dimensional gauge theories. Well, of course, this, this is you know, what, fifteen years old or something. It's <laughs> your, your your work, uh, the fifteen maybe the late nineties. No. no? Oh, I thought it was old. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> this is certainly certainly much. This is uh, yeah, I've just worked this out much more recently than these guys. So this, but. As far as I can tell, when you, when you used to go, the, 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 uh, number four was 
Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe it'll increase as time goes on. Huh? As far as I can tell, these are completely different. But maybe Nikita will correct me, and I. Okay. So I'd like to explain. What I want to explain is, like, next is. Given some four-dimensional field theory, some properties, how do we construct a lattice model? Okay. Suppose we have a 4D field theory. Which is a holomorphic. in one complex direction. And, and topological in two real directions. And let's suppose this theory has a line operator. is in the topological direction. Then I'm going to explain how this will give rise to an integrable lattice model. Yes. Um, well, for example, you know, the correlation functions will be holomorphic in one direction and constant in the other. That kind of thing. Is this, does that help? Who, who was the question? Yeah. So, in two real. Well, so, in a topological field theory, the correlation functions are in dependent of position. Here, Suppose I consider the theory on a product of two, of two surfaces, sigma 1 cross sigma 2. And this is the topological direction. This is the holomorphic. Then the expectation value of operators It'll be um, independent of position on sigma 2. But holomorphic with respect to sigma 1 position. Right. So if you, this is, you know, if you want a more abstract definition, you might say, well, it's something like a chiral conformal field theory valued in topological field theories. So it's like a vertex algebra valued in categories, this kind of thing. Can you give us examples? Yes. Um, so, and what was possibly a perverse decision I decided to give all the details of the examples at the end. But here's a general class of examples. The reason says that any n equals 2 theory um, has a twist of this form. You can see this just by looking at the supersymmetry algebra. And the main example, um, n equals 1 gauge theory, has 
a deformation which in turn has a twist of this form. And this is the example which will lead to the spin chain systems. So I, I don't know how, this, how much this will help. Um, but I would recommend just, just thinking about, I'm going to you know, draw some pictures and you know, discuss some categories using the standard axioms of topological field theory. And hopefully, that will get you some, some feeling for what kind of structure we have. And then at the end, I'll discuss the examples, this example, in some detail. Um, maybe, maybe another point. What these models typically reduce to is a topological field theory on sigma 2 values in some moduli of bundles on sigma 1. For example, I can take the A model valued in the space of Higgs bundles on sigma 1. Right? Or the, sorry, maybe the B model valued in the space of Higgs, Higgs bundles on sigma 1. That's what will arise from an n equals 4 gauge theory by applying Kapustin's construction. So it's in the same world as geometric long lens, but we, we haven't made it topological on sigma 1 yet. OK. So, so how to construct an integral model? So. So if sigma is the holomorphic surface, then such a theory assigns a category C sigma to sigma. Right? Because you know, reducing along sigma gives us a two-dimensional topological field theory. And we know that two-dimensional topological field theories are described by categories. If I take some point in sigma, um, we can consider sigma cross an interval but you put the endpoint of a wilson operator line operator <laughs> at P cross the center of the interval, say, a half. All right, so what's, here's the picture. So my surface, I have some point. Fibered over this is an interval. But on the fiber above P, I put the endpoint of my line operator. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming my theory is a line operator. This gives a functor FP C sigma to C sigma. Shit. Getting low on time. So let's assume that this guy is just vector spaces. Then FP 
is going to be tensoring with some vector space Vp. Okay, and this V will be the same V that we discussed a few minutes ago in um, our discussion of what an integral model is. Okay. If we consider the con the configuration. sigma cross square, where at p we have the vertical line, like this. So we write it like this. So p and q, there's a horizontal line. I think what is, what is, you know, the axioms of topological field theory, or like the cobordism hypothesis of Jacob Lurie, tell us we should have in such, such a situation? Well, in general, if these were functors, it would be a transformation between fq equals with fp and fp equals with fq. But because these are vector spaces, this gives a linear map. Or Q, VP tensor VQ, Q tensor VP. Okay, um, for those not so, well, maybe this board isn't great. Let me move to the other side. For those not so thrilled with the categorical picture, maybe let's now consider you know, co dimension one manifolds where we will see there will be a Hilbert space. Well, suppose we assign sigma across a circle, and at p, we, we put n endpoints of Wilson lines, of line operators. So therefore, at, at at P, it looks like the following. I have a circle with n points, the n points of my line operators. Well, then I get this vector space tensor n. Maybe I should, this is again under the assumption, the assumption that this guy is, is vector spaces. So in general, it will be the Hodge homology of this category, this functor composed with itself n times. OK, but you know, this, if, see, this is vector space, and this functor is given by tensor with a vector space. This is just the nth tensor power of the vector space. So this, you know, this is the Hilbert space of our theory in the presence of line operators at this point P. Well, so next we're going to consider some operators in the Hilbert space coming from line operators which are um, orthogonal to these guys. So let's consider the surface cross a cylinder. cylinder S1 cross an interval, then at P, we put so n vertical line operators.
uh, Q, we have a single uh, horizontal. Like this. Okay. This gives a map. VP tensor N to VP tensor N. Okay. So earlier on, we, we explained how if we have a lattice model with some matrix or on an intersection describing the interaction, then we can co construct the transfer matrix, which de describes the Hamiltonian formulation. Well, this matrix T is a transfer matrix for this interaction. Right? So suppose we take this picture and slice it up into vertical slices, then we say that we see that T is given by the trace of the composition of some n copies of R. The trace in VQ. Okay. Just again using standard properties of TFT. And now, what's the main point? This is integrable. Um, the lattice model we've constructed is integral. The commutator PQ T <coughs> PQ prime is zero. Q not Q for, for all Q Q prime not equal to P. Okay, so earlier on we just we did explain that this is what is needed for a lattice model to be integrable. Proof. Well. This is associated with the picture. Where suppose I want to compose this operator, a Q, with another operator, Q prime. Then what, what I would find is I take sigma across a cylinder, and at Q I will have. my line operator near, near the top, and at Q prime, I'll have the line operator up here. I'll have the line operator near the bottom of the cylinder. But then I can just select, it's a topological field theory. So I can just move one up and the other one down. It's topological we can slide these past each other. OK. Is uh, everybody happy with this picture? So what we've done is we've constructed an integrable lattice model where the spectral parameter lives on this surface. And because it's holomorphic, these operators will be holomorphic functions of the positions of Q and Q prime. So we really have, an, taking the you know, of Taylor expansion, we have a, an infinite number of commuting operators. And one can also check, it's very easy to check that the Young-Baxter equation holds for OR in this picture too. It's just, Young-Baxter equation is just a braid relation with labeled strands. So it's very simple. Okay. So. I'm glad I have a few minutes left for my examples, but only a few. I forgot this talk was 50 minutes. Um, so the example you want to consider is n equals 1 gauge theory. So 
I should have spent more time in this. So the action functional feels there's a connection and spinners psi plus or minus, which are adjoint valued. The action S is the integral the usual Young Mills term. plus the usual quadratic term for spinners. And we're going to consider deformation. So say work on on or four, which we'll think of as C2. The deformed action S prime is the um, this like varying theta angle plus some mass terms for the fermions. And this, this is the same class as what Gaioto and Witten considered in their paper on like Janus configurations. That's the deformation, not the deformation. This is the def this is the def this is the deformation. So then S plus S prime is the deformed action. Deformed theory has uh, one supersymmetry. Actually, Gaiuto told me he thinks it should have two, but I've only I only checked that it had one. I don't know if we need to use one. So this implies. Um, implies that we can twist. We consider um, uh, Q invariant operators modulo Q exact operators. So there's also also uh, an invariant Wilson operator in the W plane. Well, the invariant Wilson operator will come from an invariant connection. This comes from the connection. The original connection plus the T0 part of the curvature of A times dW. Right. I can always add a scalar to any connection. I choose to add this scalar. And you just compute with the explicit formulas for what the supersymmetry acts that this is invariant. This blackboard doesn't work, so I'll have to use this one. So, OK. This deformed theory um, when twisted uh, 
is a mixture of topological and holomorphic, as we discussed. Secondly, the twisted form theory admits a unique quantization in the sense of my, my work on perturbative normalization. And the Wilson operator also admits a quantization. It has some kind of natural quantization. And then the main, wait, so now, now we're in the situation we discussed earlier. So well, I should have mentioned the Wilson operator depends on a representation of the group because it's given by the trace in that representation of the holonom. So the theorem is that the, if g is equal to SLN, then the integral model we just constructed earlier um, from this, this theory is the spin chain associated to, to an SLN representation. And this representation V is the one that's defined, that defines the Wilson operator. And so lunch, so, so finally, The so corollary, if I consider this theory on C, which is the holomorphic direction across the two torus, and I put n Wilson operators at 0 on A cycles, and m of them at lambda on b cycles, then the expectation value of these operators is equal to the partition function of the spin chain chain system on an n by m periodic lattice. Um, sorry I have to go so fast through the punchline. Um, but I should just emphasize, you know, what do I mean by expectations, value, so on. This is something which in principle is given by an infinite sum of Feynman diagrams. You know, would never actually compute. And we're showing that it is actually this integrable thing. and that the proof uses something I don't want to have time to get into. It's some relation between the operator product of this theory and the Yangian. The basic point is if I take two Wilson operators and consider the which are orthogonal and take their operator product, expansion in Z, that's the OR matrix for the Yangian. Um, that we prove the, the proof that you find the Yangian is based on Drinfeld's results that the Yangian is unique. So now this, the structure of the operator product encodes a Hopf algebra. Um, OK, so I think I'll, I'll stop there. Thanks for your patience. Mm -hmm.
so short. Uh, and I, I, I'd like you to, 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 to explain why they're aligned with them. What? No, I mean, there, there's, there's only one type of integrability. So the point is that I mean, that this formal construction, given a topological holomorphic field theory, gives you exactly the axioms people write down for a two-dimensional integral, integral lattice model. And this example of such a theory gives you that example, the spin chain. So it's really, there's only one type of integrable. Uh, yeah, the, the Hitchin system plays no role. Hitchin system plays no role, no. All right, so there really is just one type of oh. I, I, you know, I, I, Well, I see your point. I mean, there is this story that the n equals 2 theory is always related to, you yeah, know, Hitchin systems and so on, but that, that doesn't play a role. Well, there. I mean, yeah, in your discussion, there's only one. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Is this written up anywhere? Yeah, I put a paper on the archive about a month and a half ago. But. What about the, are you satisfied? Do you represent other lattice models, like the XYZ model? No, I don't know how to, how to do the XYZ or even the XXXZ because um, they're, that's related to the quantum affine algebra, and I don't see how to find that in this story, only the young Ian. But I think it's a natural problem. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, the fact that they identified as dimensional things uh, among the non Um, how so? Which the, oh, I mean, this this particular spin chain. Oh, well, it's it's this. I mean, given SLN and representation, there's a spin chain constru constructed by you know, Fedeev, Drinfeld, oh, those guys. It's, it's that one. But it, so it's n, n by m, so it's like two dimensional lattice. Yeah, two dimensional n by m doubly periodic lattice. So it's, yeah. The fact that the, the actual the actual uniform theory is unbounded in all directions doesn't bother. Oh, I'm a mathematician. Well, I'm working in perturbation theory, and I. Yes. No, no, that's not. That's absolutely, yeah. Thank you. I'm asking that, that you know the action is unbounded, no direction. You, you can see what it is. Suppose we reduce along a torus. Then it becomes a beta gamma system. This twisted theory becomes a beta gamma system based on the space of local system well, of the torus. Well, why working with this theories of few supersymmetries and in this twist? You typically get anomalous theories, so the measure is not defined because right. of the uh, Yes, it, 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 I didn't explain this point. It's, it's not, it won't be, I won't be able to reduce along, along an arbitrary Riemann surface. It can only be defined on, on a torus. Okay. Everything has to be be pretty much flat for this to work. So there, I mean, there are anomalies when you try to do, do things more generally. Any more questions? Well, it's not much time for <laughs>